This is the book of Galatians 6 and 7. It says, Be not deceived, Yahweh is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. First and foremost, call Allah Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Kadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to the hopefully elect tabernacle of David. So back again, it's the brother Zariah with another lesson going into the downfall of America, Babylon the Great. And even more so, the downfall of the Edomite. So as you can see the title of this video here, when white America becomes the picture of poverty. And 50 years ago, this wouldn't even have been, well, not 50 years ago, more like 60, 70 years ago. Um, white people being homeless on the streets, strung out on drugs, um, you know, suffering, you know, even worse than Jake. Okay, even worse than Israelites and other nations that come here. All right. This is a trend that you've been seeing for a few years in which, uh, you know, the white homeless population is skyrocketed. All right. Drug use is rampant throughout white communities now. OK, even the the, the you know, cookie cutter American dream, uh, you know, eating my communities, even they're getting hit with, uh, you know, drugs and then poverty, man. It's just overall dysfunction. All right. So indeed, <clears throat> this place is being taken down, man. This place is being played. All right. Yeah, how about Shemel Shai is putting the pain on these Edomites? And like I just read in Galatians 6 and 7, all right, the Most High is not mocked. Whatsoever you sow, you're going to reap the same. And what have the Edomites sown in this land of America? All right, nothing but bloodshed, rape, robbery, murder, oppression. All right, and they're still doing it to this very day. So eventually, that's just the law that the most high is set up in the universe, man. Okay, whatsoever you sow, that's what you're gonna reap. So if you sow evil, if you sow wickedness and you know pain and oppression, guess what? You're gonna reap the same eventually. All right? And I know y'all brothers and sisters can attest to this, but I know whenever I'm outside, I'm seeing majority Edomites, man. Okay, I'm seeing Edomites strung out, homeless. You know, uh, what, uh, what they call it, panhandling, begging for change, begging for, for, for food. You know what I'm saying? I'm not really seeing Jake like that out there. You know, I'm not really seeing no. You know, I'm not. I'm not saying that they're not out there, but I'm. I'm not seeing them like that. As to, I'm seeing so-called white people out there that's homeless and destitute. I'm just not seeing that, and I'm sure that y'all can attest to the same. But yeah, this is even more of a, uh, a realization that America is about to collapse. Okay, because like I mentioned, man, back in the you know the, the early 1900s, the 50s, uh, the 60s, this 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 right here was unheard of. All right, you would have never seen a, a homeless Edomite. Okay, you would have never seen that, man. But now it's all over the place, and and, and this video is more uh, more so going into it happening on the west coast but it's, it's happening all across america see you know uh edomites are dying from drug overdoses you know families are being torn apart so indeed the curses are coming off of jake and they're being applied to the heathen which we'll get in <clears throat> deuteronomy 30 but um without further ado i'm not going to make this a long video i just want to check out a portion of this clip um line it up with the scriptures and we can close out so let's check it out morning from the beautiful city of portland oregon these are images and video from an army of citizen journalists in portland who have been documenting a city in decline public drug abuse addicts sprawled on the sidewalks or wandering the streets tent encampments on many street corners and fires seen burning along the roadways what used to be one of america's most beautiful and livable cities is being slowly destroyed by epidemic levels of crime drug abuse so did you hear that he said what used to be one of America's most beautiful and prosperous cities is now being destroyed by drug abuse. 
all right, amongst other things. Now, let's go back in time, right? Because like the scriptures say, whatsoever you sow, that shall you also reap, right? So what was happening back in the, <clears throat> from about, I would say hardcore from about the 60s, 70s, and the 80s, right? Well, the 80s, it, 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 you know, really hit hardcore, but, you know, the crack era. And before that, it was it was cocaine and heroin that was destroying the so-called black community. And where did these drugs come from? All right. These drugs were pumped into the so-called black community by Edomites. OK, there were policies put in place there. There, there were, uh, you know, certain fundings um, and they don't talk about a lot of this, but but there were funding set up. Um, organizations were, were, were put in place mainly by the uh, CIA, okay, to uh, set up cer certain people, okay, with what, what will be known as kingpins, okay, uh, 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 drug lords, right? And they were used to pump drugs into the Israelite community to destroy it, all right? Because after slavery, Look what, look what Jake was doing after slavery. You know what I'm saying? Jake had black towns all over America, right? Then all, all that got destroyed. Then came the civil rights era in which, you know, Jake wanted to integrate with the Edomites because they thought that white ice was colder. Okay, even though we had our own already, but we just thought that, oh, the white establishments, you know, they're more set up and, and, and more and more, more clean. You know what I'm saying? So Jake wanted to go with Esau, basically. So then we integrated into their society, which that wasn't about being equal, okay? Uh, uh, civil rights and, and, and the so-called white man allowing, you know, Jake to integrate into, into his society, that, that wasn't about him changing his mind and, and loving you and seeing you as his equal now. That, that's not what it was about. It was about money, okay? It was about money and control for Esau, all right? Because once Esau looked at the figures... And they saw that Jake pretty much accounted for over half of America's buying power. OK, and this is back in the 50s and the 60s. All right. Jake, Jake, you know, what I'm saying Jake was well to do. You know, what I mean, for for the most part, because back then we had a sense of a family unit. All right. And Jake understood that, you know, we we basically all we got. So we have to come together and make something happen. You know what I'm saying? So our communities back then, it, it wasn't perfect, but they were a lot better than what you see now. All right. Because you had the man in the house, you know, and things were still kind of in in order. But after civil rights, that's when you really saw our people really break down to what you see today. All right. Which is complete dysfunction. See. But I don't want to get off topic. You know, basically what I was getting into was that Esau pumped the drugs into the community. And that, you know, that that led to a further destruction of our community and to what you see today. So now the most high has flipped the script back on these Edomites. Now what you see is these Edomites dying from drug overdoses. All right. Now their children are being destroyed. Listen, man, a whole generation of so-called white people are being destroyed and then strung out on, on uh, drugs. All right. And it's not just the typical uh, you know, fiend that you might see out here. A lot of them got suits and ties on and then they go home and they strung out and they want to get high. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of them are OD. OK, so. The history goes way back, man. All right. But now the most high is, is returning that recompense upon their own head. All right. And, and you got places like Philadelphia, complete zombie town, man. You know what I'm saying? You got you got. Edomites out there strung out on this new drug they got called Trank, which is basically horse tranquilizer. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, the Most High is, is scourging these these um, heathen, okay? And, and, and this is really all because of the evil that you've done unto his chosen people, okay? This is why America has fallen the way that it is. Let's continue. Homelessness, Homelessness and mental illness. mental illness. One local is called Portland, an open-air insane open asylum. asylum. Counselor Kevin Dahlgren, who's trying to help the city's addicts. Many of the tents you see here are supplied by Multnomah County. Dahlgren believes at least some officials are okay with what's happened to the city. How could they not be okay with it for as long as this has gone on, right? 
every day we walk past these camps, we see people languishing and dying on the streets. That is not okay. Every year we say this is a state of emergency, right? But who here is treating it like in a true state of emergency? Dahlgren says activists actually put up empty tents to attract more tents. That is a common practice to erect tents to invite homeless in, uh, to be homeless, right? And that makes our job now 10 times harder. They will just erect the tents in hopes that a person will find the tent and move inside. During our time with Dahlgren, he met one homeless man who said he was given a bus ticket to Portland by the city of Billings, Montana. Portland has become a mecca for addicts and drug dealers who have migrated here from across. Look at that, man. This is crazy. <laughs> and these are, like, like I said, man, 50, 60 years ago, 50 to 70 years ago, you would have never seen this, man. Okay, you, you would have never seen Edomites lined up on the block. Wait, waiting to get high. All right, so this this is this is an indication that you know America and these Edomites they threw finished. Okay, it ain't no coming back, man. Because because once people get to this point, once the uh, uh, you know moral fiber of a, of a society gets to the point where you know people don't care about nothing no more, it's just all about self pleasure and getting high. You ain't trying to look out for you know, the next man or, you know what I'm saying, you don't care about your kids no more, all you care about is getting high, which is so gratification, that's that's when you know that a society is really about to collapse, okay, because you can't, a society can't run where people don't care about each other, a society cannot run where your neighbor is not looking out for the next man, all right, because then what that's going to cause, that's going to cause envy and, and uh, hate, okay, between people, man, because it's like, damn, you know, I'm over here busting my ass, working, you know what I mean, doing what I got to do, and then I got this junkie outside my house. You know what I'm saying? You can't even work with something like that, you know? I got a, I got a whole line of, you know, fiends down the street just looking to get high. Now, my neighborhood that I worked so hard to get, now it's full with nothing but junkies. Like, now the whole city is, is taken over by, you know, junkie Edomites, man, so... You know, call all y'all about Shemia Washa, okay? Because these, you know, so-called white people, they, they've had this coming for a very, very long time, all right? And in the days when, you know, they used to look at Jake and say that uh, Jake was, you know, the scourge of the earth, you know, the so-called, you know, black, Latino, Native American, you know, they they all just need to be exterminated because they, they contribute nothing, all right? Well, look what's going on with you uh, Edomites, see? the country to take advantage of weak drug laws. It's also attracted drug cartels. There were 11 drug overdoses on March 31st alone, and one pill of fentanyl can cost as little as $1. Things got worse for the city when Oregon voters approved Measure 110. It decriminalized possession of small amounts of drugs, making it a health care issue and not a crime, which has led to a surge in crime. It wasn't always like... But yet... What was they doing back in, uh, you know, the crack era, man? Okay. If Jake got caught, I, I forget how much it was, but I think it was like a gram or five grams, something like that. If you was caught with a gram to five grams of, of, of uh, cocaine or even weed for that matter, Esau would throw the book at your ass, man. Okay. Esau would, would, would give you football numbers. Understand? But now with these Edomites, they 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 pretty much decriminalize everything for them. Okay. They said, oh yeah, well, you know, fentanyl's legal. They even set up uh, uh recreation centers where people can go and get high now. They'll they'll actually give you the drugs and and, and, and then watch you do it so that according to them, you'll have a safe place in which you know you can be monitored in your drug use because they understand that they so far are gone. You might as well just 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 let them have it. You know what I'm saying? Like these people got demons on them, man. You know, they have addictive demons on them that, that they can't shake. It's just too late. And really, this 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 all goes back to the judgment of the Lord, okay, on these wicked heathen. All right, this is exactly what's going on. So we're gonna check out a little bit more of this video, then we can get some scriptures and close this out. Cause uh, hey man, this this is a uh, it's crunch time. All right. 
and you're gonna see it get worse. All right, you're gonna see it get 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 worse, man. Just like Esau put the movies out about the the uh, zombie apocalypse. Hey, it's gonna be a zombie apocalypse for real, man. All right, this is gonna be some real I am legend stuff going on out here very very soon. Just just you wait and see. Like this. Seventy-nine percent of businesses surveyed in Portland have been victims of vandalism or break-ins. Nineteen percent have been vandalized at least five times. Uh, our business has been vandalized over half a dozen times. We've had uh, five burglaries in our business. We've had over $100,000 worth of impact. Walmart and Cracker Barrel are part of a wave of businesses that have fled the city. More than 2,600 downtown businesses have left. Portland's social experience. Why cold process soap is different than regular soap. Large commercial soap makers use... Experiment. This progressive experiment has gone colossally bad. Jeff and Angela are Portland business owners and community reporters with PDX Real. I can't stress it enough. It has impacted everything from our banks are being broken into, ATMs are being stolen. We have people that are just going to work, walking in their neighborhood, being assaulted. It's like it's in some sort of like controlled demolition, really. And when I say that, it's because a lot of this stuff comes from policy. Lax laws against car theft have made stealing cars a growth industry in Portland. One out of every two police stops in the city involves a stolen car. We went to one of Portland's former shop sites with Nick Haas, the founder of Guardians Theft Recovery. A okay, so basically I'm um, over there in uh, the West, you know, uh, Oregon, Washington State, California, um, they they just pretty much going left on all the laws. It's pretty much lawless over there. You know, like they allow so much crime to the point where the crime has uh, increased to to a point where is is really no uh, no longer livable. You know, they've they've allowed um, hard drug use. You know, they've 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 allowed theft. You know what I'm saying? So. California and all them states over there in the West is, is you know, finished, man. Okay, and that's really a broader representation of America at large, all right? <clears throat> so, yeah, man, these, these Edomites are finished. Let's go to Deuteronomy 30. Deuteronomy chapter 31, and it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have said before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whether the Lord thy God hath driven thee, and shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion unto thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations whether the Lord thy God has scattered thee. And this is what's happening right now. Okay, right now, starting with uh, the hopeful elect, okay, we pushing out that righteous vibration among Israel to repent and turn back unto the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of your ability. All right? We not, we not out here just, you know, giving our people an excuse to do wickedness just because they're in captivity. Nah, man, it's, it's, it is high time to wake out of sleep and return to the Lord, all right? Because really, if Jake continue to 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 be wicked, man, then, hey, we ain't never gonna get up out of here. You know, we ain't. Hey, we will be here <laughs> for for a lot longer, man. You know, but of course, we know everything is in the power of the Most High. You know, but the more Jake that 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 wake up and they repent and turn back to to the Lord, Esau's kingdom is falling sooner and sooner. All right. Just think if every single last one of our people woke up tomorrow and was like, you know what, I ain't gonna be wicked no more. I'm a, I'm a uh, keep the commandments, okay? Pookie and Ray Ray in the hood, they was like, you know what, I don't want gang bang no more. I don't want to sell drugs no more. I'm, a, I'm a just do the will of the Most High. Guess what? This, this society would collapse overnight, man. Okay, this, this society would collapse like that. The prophecies would start happening like that. You know. But starting with the hopeful elect of Yahweh Bashem you know, we the ones that's pushing out 
that 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 vibration of you know sincere repentance, you know, and that's why the days are being short. You know, what I'm saying that's why prophecy is now speeding up. The prophecies are speaking up, man. All right. Yeah, so the Lord will turn <clears throat> turn away our captivity. Okay, which hey, we see our captivity being turned right now. You know, the Lord is you know afflicting these nations, and hey, he, the Lord coming back for his elect very soon. If any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good, and multiply thee above thy fathers. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart, and the seed, and the heart of thy seed, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. In verse 7, this is the point. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecute thee. Okay, so the Lord said that he would put the curses upon the enemies of the Israelites. <clears throat> which our main enemy, our main adversary is who? The Edomites, okay, the so-called Caucasian race, okay, they, 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 those are our are our enemies, all right, and on them that hate thee, okay, which have persecuted us, all right, so now the Lord, in this video, when white America becomes the picture of poverty, all right, the Lord has put the curses on them that hate us, all right, and thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day see so indeed the lord is doing a great work uh afflicting the heathen okay and also putting his spirit back out to the earth man okay starting with the hopefully elect. let's go to psalms 10 <clears throat> all right because there's a reason why this is now happening unto the heathen okay there's a reason why um let me see why i want to start matter of fact let me let me just start at verse one why standest thou far off O lord why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble the wicked okay now when you see the wicked okay in this uh context in the scriptures okay this is referring to esau edom okay because esau was created to be the wicked, okay? Yeah, you have wicked people, you have even wicked Israelites, but they were a people that were created to be evil. Okay, they were a people that were created to be adverse, to be the adversary to the Most High and His chosen people, the wicked, okay, which is known as Esau, Edom, the so called Caucasian race in the scriptures, all right? In his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. All right, so hey, it says what that Esau, okay, his 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 uh, wicked devices that he's imagined, they're gonna overtake him, okay, which is why you see that uh the the uh, you know so-called um, Caucasian, they are the number one homeless population in America above all other nationalities of people, all right, that's not a coincidence, all right? For for the wicked boasted of his heart's desire and blesses the covetous. Whom the Lord abhors. Now, who does the Lord abhor or hate? He, okay, the Lord says, and then this is a recurring theme in the scriptures, that he hate Esau. Okay, that he loved Jacob and hated Esau. All right? So Esau, the wicked, boasts of his heart's desire, which is to do what? To destroy the Israelites, man. Okay? Slavery, Jim Crow, uh, uh, sundown towns, the, the, the uh, uh, you know, Ku Klux Klan. All right? Race soldiers that call themselves police, uh, redlining, okay, drugs and, and, and alcohol in the Israelite community, okay, all these things are to destroy Jake, man, okay, just just outright kill you, all right, boast of his heart's desire, and bless the covetous, the wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after Yahweh, Yahweh is not in all his thoughts, okay, so this devil don't 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 fear the Lord, man, okay, Esau does not fear the Most High. And that's why he continues to do the things that he's doing, because he himself hates the Most High. See? And that's the pride of Esau to where he thinks that, that he's really above the Most High and above his chosen people. See? 
Because it, and the reason why Esau feel like that is because he hasn't been judged yet. Esau really hasn't seen any adversity yet, man. You know what I'm saying? Nowhere near to what Jake has uh, uh, seen. You see? Esau been doing all this wickedness since he came into power, and then nothing has, has, has happened to him yet. But that's because he's, uh, the Lord has reserved a final judgment for the Edomites. Okay? He has reserved that final judgment for Esau. So guess what? He, basically what the Lord is doing is <clears throat> he, he's allowing Esau to rack up the tab. Okay, he, he's allowing Esau to run up the bill, if you will, so that w when the day of judgment comes, okay, your rap sheet is going to be so long, okay, the tab is going to be bigger than what you can pay. So that's going to be your destruction, man, okay? But the Most High have mercy on us because when, you know, whenever we go off, the Most High will judge us right then and there. You know what I'm saying? But Esau... He don't he don't he don't judge Esau. Like he just allows Esau to do his wickedness until the final day of judgment in which he gonna have to pay the whole tab. Alright? Which hey, that 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 uh check is bigger than what Esau can pay. Alright? Um, what was I at? Yeah. His ways are always grievous, thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. <laughs> Who can bring me down to the ground? I got the strongest military in the world. Okay, I got all the money. I got all the resources. Okay, I can I can do whatever I want with the Lord's people. Okay, I can I can uh, blaspheme the Lord. See, he puffeth at them. He said he has said in his heart, I shall not be moved, <laughs> for I shall never be in adversity. Okay, and this is the innermost uh, thinking of the Edomite. Okay, and 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 whenever um, you hear these Edomites speak about their their kingdom their society oh well by 2050 and 2060 oh well, a thousand years from now like they know that they're gonna be still ruling the earth in a thousand years man so that's 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 the inner pride of these edomites man they think that they will never be taken down okay i will never be in adversity okay i'll i will never fall <laughs> uh, i will always rule over the planet earth all right his mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages, in the secret places that he murdered the innocent. Which the innocent are who? The Israelites. Because ultimately, we, well, we were guilty, right? But then Yahweh Shai came and, and he redeemed us from our sin. Okay, so indeed we are innocent. Because at the end of the day, even the most wicked Israelite, even though they may be judged and die on this side, when they come back in the kingdom, they're going to be righteous and they're going to have mercy. All right. So hey, Esau has been slaying the innocent, man. OK, murdering the innocent wholesale. His eyes are privily set against the poor. OK, which the poor are the Israelites. OK, because we are the only nation within the planet Earth that has no inheritance. OK, all these other nations, they have their nations. Uh, they have their their uh, wealth. Okay, but we have nothing. Okay, everything that we have, we have to get from the other nations. We have to get from someone else. Okay, that's not the case with these other nations. Um, he lieth and waits secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth and waits to catch the poor. He doth catch the poor when he draweth them into his net. So that so that means what? Okay, Esau sets up snares and traps for the Israelites in order to cause you to fall, right? So the war on drugs, that was a snare and a trap that was used to further destroy the, uh, you know, Israelite uh, family structure. OK, Esau is the one that pumped the drugs into the so-called black, Hispanic and Native American communities. He, he you know, saying he's the one <clears throat> that, that uh, set up a liquor store on every corner in your community. OK, he's the one that allowed these other nations these these, these uh, more bites to come in and set up shop and take money from you. Not allowing you to get a job, you know, what I'm saying putting you in a constant cycle of a rat race. OK, to where. You young and you poor, you destitute, so you got to make money somehow cause, because because you got to live right. You got to take care of your family. Right. And you can't get a job. OK, because Esau won't give you a good paying job unless you go through his institutions. Right. So then what? The next best thing goes, well, OK, you know, what I'm saying maybe I can, you know, slang a little something. Maybe I can sell sell a little something, you know, what I'm saying get, you know, get on my feet. Then when you do that, you get hammed up, you get booked. 
You know what I'm saying? Esau got you on the books now. Then when you get out, you, hey, you even worse off than, than before when you went in because now you institutionalized, right? Now you come out, you got a record, you can't get a job for nothing. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, a lot of times Jake end up going right back behind the slammer. Okay, right back in the clink, man. All right, but these are the these are the snares and the traps that he has set up to persecute and destroy the poor. All right, he croucheth and humbleth himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. Okay. Oh yeah, well, uh, we're gonna set up this program and this community to 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 um, you know do this when all, all what they're doing is gathering more information. Okay, gathering uh, <laughs> you know um more control, you know what I'm saying, to, to, to better know how to destroy Jake, okay, that's, that's really all it is, man, you see, humbles himself, he comes in like he wants to help you, but really in his, in his heart, okay, he wants to further dis uh, destroy you, okay, setting up abortion clinics, you know what I'm saying, like I mentioned before, uh, liquor stores, you know what I mean, drugs and all that kind of stuff, man, okay, he has said in his heart, Yahweh hath forgotten. He hideth his face. He will never see it. So you see, this is Esau's mentality. Okay, all the wickedness and evil that he's doing, he, he thinks that the Most High is forgotten, man. Okay, he thinks that the Most High is not seeing what he's doing. But Esau, you're greatly deceived because the Most High sees everything that you're doing, you damn devil. Okay, and guess what? You ain't going to get away with none of it. Okay, you may think you're getting away with it now because you haven't been afflicted yet. Okay, even though you, you, you know what I'm saying, like you start to feel the affliction now. But hey, when the Most High drop the hammer on your ass, Esau, you're going to know that it's the judgment of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Because the Most High ain't forgotten nothing, man. Okay, the Most High is just allowing you to, to be the devil. Okay, because that's what you are, man. Okay, you are the physical counterpart of the spiritual being Satan upon the planet Earth. So the Most High is allowing you to play out your role. All right, but once your role is done, you're going to be utterly destroyed and burnt up like you never existed. That's your ultimate judgment. All right. So hey, you can feel like the most high is not seeing you. You can feel like you just have all this impunity and all this power in the world to do whatever you want. All right. But at the end of the day, you're going to be destroyed for all your wickedness. Okay. Proverbs 10 and 12. Uh, it's like it. Psalms 10 and 12. Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up thine hand. Forget not the humble. Wherefore doth the wicked condemn Yahweh? He has said in his heart, thou will not require it. Okay. Thou hast seen it, for thou beholdest mischief in spite to requite it in the in with the like <laughs> For thou beholdest mischief in spite to requite it with thy hand. The poor committed himself unto thee, thou art the helper of the fatherless. Break thou the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Seek out his wickedness till thou find none. Alright, so hey, ultimately Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is gonna come back to redeem his elect, and he's gonna come back to destroy the wicked all right so esau enjoy enjoy what little time you have left because your time is coming to an end all right amos 1 and 11 classic scripture let's get it thus saith the lord for three transgressions of edom and for four i will not turn away the punishment thereof because he did pursue his brother with the sword and did cast off all pity and his anger did tear perpetually and he kept his wrath forever. But I will send a fire upon Teman, which shall devour the palaces of Bozrah. All right. <clears throat> so Edom, hey, the Most High said for three transgressions and for four, he will not turn away the punishment, man. Okay, so just like Esau said, just like the wicked said that the Most High has, has uh, forgotten. You think he's forgotten, but to do it 80. Yahweh said what? For three and for four, I'm not going to turn away the punishment. Okay, so stuff that Esau probably forgot about, you know, what I'm saying things in history that, that, that he done hid and and then buried, hey, because we know that, that there's a lot of that, you know, stuff that he done, all the kind of dirt that he done did and then swept it under the rug. And hey, guess what? The Most High remembers that, man. The Most High sees all of that. So, no, okay, <clears throat> the Heavenly Father, he's not going to turn away the punishment, okay? You're going to be utterly wasted and destroyed, all right? Because why? You cast it off all pity toward the Israelites, man. Okay, you regarded not the young nor the old. Okay, and hey, you still doing it now, you damn devil. Okay, and his anger did tear perpetually. Okay, so that perpetual hatred that, that was in you because you sold your own birthright. 
okay? Which, it, you know, you was never meant to have it, okay? It was always prophesied that the elder would serve the younger. So, but, you know, let's just say theoretically, if Esau was never to sell it, then he would have had it, okay? But, hey, you ain't care about it, man, all right? You sold the birthright, and then you despised it. You said, to what good is this birthright going to be to me if I'm dead? You see? Not even considering your own offspring and your future descendants. You ain't care about none of that. You you know what I'm saying? You was you was interested in an in, in immediate self gratification with, with a bowl of red pottage. <laughs> All right, for one morsel of meat, man. Okay? And and you kept your wrath forever about that. Okay, so to this very day, Esau's main thing has been to destroy the Israelites so he can do what? So he can get the birthright back. Okay, so he, you know, in, in, in Esau's twisted mind, he thinks, yeah, well, if I destroy the Israelites and, and I can destroy them all, then the Most High will look at me and then take me back and then give me the blessing because his people will no longer exist. But you see, Esau, that's the mindset of, of a wicked demon. Okay, and, and hey, the Most High knows your heart. Okay, the Most High knows the heart of the Edomite, man. Okay, and that's why he's, hey, the Most High has a, has a great judgment. Uh, reserved for you so-called white people man okay and hey it's coming very very soon all right so with that uh, hopefully this lesson was edifying through the work in closing call lord yahweh bashim yahweh shai bashim work and until next time shut up to the elect come out shahala dta and the bible ball we'll let a few few more seconds of this play out and let's say shalom community-based group that has helped recover more than 700 stolen vehicles. This is the site of the Midway Chop operation. The Midway Chop operated for about six to nine months, and our crew estimates about 250 to 300 stolen vehicles were illegally processed and cut up into pieces at this site. And they knew that there was basically catch and release. If you got caught with a stolen vehicle, you're going to get booked, you're going to get held for about 48 hours, and you're going to get back down the street. So it kind of became like a candy land for them. Critics call Critics Portland call the poster child for what happens when progressive policy goes too far. Portland officials are now conducting tent sweeps to clean up the city and <laughs> Shalom.